Hello and welcome. Welcome to Cook Conversations Live. I'm Geraldine Wilkins, the Living Water Quilter, and we are live. We're live on Amazon Live. We're live on YouTube, and we are live on Facebook. Welcome, everyone. Hello to the ladies on YouTube. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And yes, I did miss you. I missed you. I was away, but I am now back. I'm so glad to be back. How are you? Hello, Copper. Hello, Lois. Hello, hello, everyone. Marsha, how are you? Hello, Elaine. It's so good to be here. I am back. It seems like it's been longer than a week, but it's just been a week. <laughs> well, is it two weeks now since we missed last week? I don't, I can't keep, I'm just glad I'm back. Well, hello, Benita. How are you? I'm so glad you're here. Awesome. Hey, Wilda. Yes, welcome back. I'm back. You know, I never thought I would say this, but I, I miss being live. I miss joining you ladies on Fridays and having a conversation. Did I miss anyone? Lois, Copper, Marsha, hello, and hello to my friends watching on Amazon and Facebook. I'm so glad you're here. Don't forget, if you have any questions on Amazon, just unmute, join us in the chat. And when I'm looking down, I'm looking down at the computer or my phone just to make sure everything is looking good. So I'm just checking in. <laughs> We are going to talk about baskets. I know that some of you have been waiting to find out how does she make her baskets. This is technically not a quilt conversation. It's more about sewing, but as quilters, we do sew. And I love to make baskets. How many of you ladies make baskets? Did you see I was stitching a little bit on the preview while you were waiting? Some of the techniques that I use to make my baskets. What do you think about this one? Now, it has taken me a long time <laughs> to get to this point. If you make baskets, let me know in the chat. Do you enjoy making rope baskets? Have you made rope baskets with fabric? with a cotton fibers, like a rope. Um, that's what I use. I use a rope. So if you're on uh, Amazon, I will highlight the rope that I use. And of course, for those watching on YouTube, all the links to everything I'm sharing tonight is in the YouTube description below. This is cotton rope and you can get it. It's clothesline. It's clothesline. Have you heard of that? Yes. It's clothesline, something that you would hang your clothes with outdoors. And it's a cotton rope. This one is 100 yards. Now, I wanted to get right into this. So, Kaba, you've made them, but a long time ago. Okay. And yes, quilters need baskets for other stuff. Yes, Elaine, that's true. So we are going to look at some of the tools and techniques that I use for making my rope baskets. And this is the Scotty Cotton Clothesline. Now they come in different rope thicknesses. I don't like it to be too thin or too thick. It's hard to handle if it's too thick and then hard to sew if it's too thin. So Copper says she likes to wrap hers with fabric and I like to do that too. And in my exploration of rope basket making, I have ventured out to add a lot of different things. So Lois says she has never made one. Well, this is going to be interesting too because you can make a lot of things with rope with cotton rope. Here's another example. This is a tray and you notice it has some embellishments. I'm going to talk about these embellishments. Now, what is my process? First, it, ha it has taken me time to find a rope that is economical and works for what I want. And there's all kinds of rope, like I mentioned. I'm going to go to my overhead camera 
so you can see up close what I'm talking about. So here it is, Scotty Cotton Clothesline. And there you see the size. That is the size, the diameter that I like to work with. It's not too thin and it's not too thick. This is 100 feet. And of course, I have developed a system of taking it out of the wrapper and then putting it into these um, balls of rope. I unravel it and then I make it into this ball. You know, just like when you're doing um, yarn, you take the skein and you wrap it into this ball so it's easier to work with. You take it out of the skein and you roll it into this ball. And so you can see what thickness this is. It's not too thick. It's just the right thickness for cotton um, rope basket making. Now, you can get this in 100 and you can get it in 200 feet lengths. It just depends on where you purchase it, what's available. Now, I have to say that there's all kinds. This particular one is not hard to sew. It's very pliable, but I do use a 100 needle, a 100 needle. So we can get through this. Now this one has on the inside, it has a um, a core in it. It's not, um, it has a polyester cord in the middle, core, polyester core. And that core is wrapped by this cotton fiber. Okay, it's wrapped by this woven cotton fiber. That's one, another reason why I like to use the 100 needle. I use a top stitch needle because that's what I use for quilting and I just break out my 100 needle. And I'll highlight that in the carousel for those who are watching on Amazon. Now, I like to begin my rope baskets in a number of ways. Remember, I've been doing this for a number of years and I have a lot of different techniques, but for a basic basket, you're going to start by just wrapping it a little beginning and then I'll zigzag stitch that. I just do that separately. Zigzag stitch. That's my beginning. Now I'm ready. Oh, the other thing I do, I don't know if you can see this. I wonder if it's on the other end. Let me see if it's on the other end because this is an important part. I want you to see this. I'm going to unravel because after I take this 100 feet, if I'm going to make a large basket, I'll use the whole thing. If I want two medium-sized baskets, I break it up in half. Two uh, 50 feet uh, sections of rope. If I want to make small baskets, then I break it up into 25 feet. So my small is 25 feet, my medium is 50 feet, and my large is 100 feet. That's how I determine the size of my baskets. That way I can be consistent in the size when I'm making it. But I want to show you something. Um, that I like to do to start off with, no matter what rope it is, uh, this is how I start it off. Okay, this end you can see now. Once I have eliminated and reduced the, um, the rope into sections, 25 feet, 50 feet, etc., then I start to sew with a straight stitch can you see that right there is this a straight stitch it closes off that end nice straight stitch as close as I can and then I will come in and trim off that excess I'll even take some scissors here and just to make it nice and neat I will trim this section off Trim, trim, trim. I don't cut the, the stitching, of course. 
but I want that extra little bit of rope gone so you, it, there's no fuzz in the beginning of the basket in the center. So you see that's been cleaned off a little bit. Once I do that, so I do this first, then I start this wrap and I'll do a, a zigzag stitch. Now, this is important. You can put this underneath your machine needle and have it feeding from this side of the machine. So your machine is here in front of you. Your needle is here. This side is the open section of your tabletop. The back of the machine is on this side. If you feed on this side, the basket's going to form on the right. If you feed on the left, it's going to form on the right. But then you have trouble because it's going to start to build up underneath your machine. So you always want to feed on the right-hand side of the loop. Write that down. This is a good tip to remember. Feed on the right-hand side. And as you feed, you are doing a zigzag. Now you see why I did that tight stitch there? Because I'm gonna wrap this over. Wrap that right over and I'm gonna do a zigzag and keep going with a zigzag. And you're probably wondering what type of zigzag does she use? I use the widest zigzag I can, usually a five, all the way over. 100 needle and a zigzag and you keep stitching zigzag back and forth a wide zigzag will make sure that you catch both sides and you're just feeding that underneath the machine and as it gets bigger and bigger it's going to build up on the outside of the machine this side not underneath the machine on this side that's how I start a basic bag. I mean, a basic basket. So I take 100 feet. I use a whole one. If I'm going to make a big basket, I will um, cut it in half, 50 feet to make medium size, but this is what I use. Okay, so that's the beginning, the basics. What about embellishments? What about when I want to add something extra like this? And, or I want an oval shape instead of a round shape. How do I do that? Now, you ladies know that I like to do multiple steps. Multiple steps. And I like to add fun things. Let me go to the overhead camera. Like different color threads. You see the zigzag with the different color threads? Also notice how it ends right here. It has a nice round end. And then we have craft text. This is a craft paper that looks like leather, but you can sew it and it's resilient. How do you get that look? Well, there's a number of ways to do that. Another thing that I like to do is use variegated thread. Sometimes before I even begin making the basket, I will take two pieces of rope. Oh, hi, Marsha. Yes, she loves, your sister loves baskets. I'm glad you like the tip. Okay, my text is not showing up. Let me fix that. Let's see. That text should be... Um, there we go. Much better. Okay. <laughs> so, I will do a special 
edition. Hello, Pamela. So glad you're here. I'm going to show it to you on the overhead camera. Here is one of my techniques. I'll take two pieces of rope on either side and I will sew those two together before I make the basket. So there's two on either side and then I will stitch another decorative thinner rope or cord right down the middle. Can you see that? It's right down the middle. Right down the middle. Now this is before I even start making the basket. So basically I'm making my own rope. Right? My own rope. I have taken a simple basic clothesline rope and now I'm making it into another rope that I can use to make the basket. And that's what I've done here. I've taken two ropes and instead of putting that extra piece of cord down the middle, craft cord, I put craft text. Now you're saying, well, what is craft text? So this is ready. This is ready to become a basket because I've done a couple of steps to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, that's ready. Craft text, this red, deep red paper was added intermittently, just randomly as I sewed two pieces of cord together. As I took two pieces side by side, I put the craft text on top before I made the basket. Okay, so I want to share with you. Let's see, here we go. That's what it looks like in a photo. You can see the basket and the tray. I use the craft text in two ways to give embellishments to the rope basket. I used it by laying it on top, like you see here. And in the tray, I wrapped it around the rope as I stitched. Wrap it around. I'm going to highlight this in the carousel for those who are looking. This is the craft text. It's called Masala. That's the color, Marsala. Highlighting the carousel on Amazon. I use craft text for this patch in the center and also as a weave around the rope, the clothesline cotton rope. I'm going to show you a little video of what that looks like. Let's take a look. Uh, let's see. We're going to look at the basket first. Now you can see a little bit more of the size of the basket. Okay. This is what it looks like in the center, this oval shape. It looks like candy cane. Thank you, Pamela. I'm glad you like it. Okay, so here we go. So there it is underneath my machine. That's a Janome. It's a memory craft machine. Those watching on Amazon, I'll highlight a similar machine to mine. It's another memory craft, just a different make, I mean, different model. Mine is an older memory craft, but essentially has the same features, and I love it. I use a regular foot, a 116 needle, and I'm using different threads. Now, this one has multiple threads. Can you see from this photo that I've used multiple threads? Now, the threads for making the baskets, they have multiple purposes. Oh, thank you, Marsha. I'm glad you like it. The thread has multiple purposes. One, it's to get it started. Those two ends that I showed you, how I started, that's my utility thread. And I will use a cotton thread. I'll use um, so fine, or I will use um, con connecting threads cotton thread. 
I'll highlight that in the carousel for those watching on Amazon. And so it could be, it's probably going to be a neutral thread. Let's see, do I have one here? Well, sometimes it can be even um, orophil or so fine, but it's usually going to be a thread that blends with the rope. Sometimes it's either white or a cream. That's my utility thread, and I'm using a 50 weight thread, 50 or 40, 50 or 40 for my utility thread to finish off the ends, to start, if I'm doing a basic one, to start stitching. Now, if I want to add some pizzazz, some extra, like you can see here, I've added some red thread. That red was added at a different point in the process. I don't know if you can tell from the needle, that red thread was added first. The red thread was added first because I was adding this craft text when I was putting the two pieces of rope together. Then I went back as I was making it because I had the two pieces of rope together. Now this is the thread that's going to show on the inside and outside. Let me show you a close-up look. Maybe that will help. Hello, Rochelle. How are you? So glad you're here. So look at the inside. You see how the red thread is alternating? It's not every single um, time you see the ropes next to each other. There's a little break in between each line of red zigzag stitching. So I have red thread and then I have my utility thread. And I used red when I was making the rope uh, with the craft text ahead of time. So that's what you see here. You see the red thread when I was attaching the craft text to the rope, to two pieces of rope before I made the basket. And that is the craft text. And I'm going to show you how I cut that down how I cut down the craft text. Okay, but look at what happens when you add a little extra color on the inside. You get this nice zigzag look of red color on the inside and you get it intermittently on the outside. Hello, Lorraine, so glad you're here. Again, those watching on Amazon, I'm using this cotton clothesline to make baskets, to make this basket. And you can do it too. I'm sharing you some with you some of the embellishments that I use to do that. Let me go back to um, the basket here underneath the sewing machine. So this basket has multiple steps, multiple steps, adding the embellishment with the craft text and then making two ropes come together to add the craft text and then sewing it again to make the basket, multiple steps. Let me show you the craft text that I am talking about. You can get it in rolls, you can get it in sheets if you've never used craft text before. I like to get sometimes this a sampler pack. You can get it pre-washed or unwashed. And I'm gonna show you the difference. I like the pre-washed designer colors and that's what you see here. Okay, let's go to the overhead camera. Uh, right here. Okay, so this is the craft text, hand dyed, 
and pre-washed. You can get it in rolls or you can get it in these um, packs. Now, you can see that I've already started using mine. And here's some where I made some hearts. This is the orchid. This is greenery, nice bright colors. This is blue Irish, lots of beautiful colors. And they're eight and a half by 11 sheets. You can even see that leather-like texture that I was talking about, which I really like that texture in the craft text. Isn't that pretty? So pretty and beautiful. And you can sew on it. Yes, I did use the AccuCook Go to cut the hearts. <laughs> Very observant copper. Yes, I did. I did. Um, now, another set is the neutral set. So those are the two sets that I would get. I just highlighted it in the carousel for those watching on Amazon. If you've never tried craft text before, the neutral set gives you some basics, some natural, white, black, and what they call stone. So you can see here, I even did some experimenting, stitching into the craft text. This is stone. This was unwashed, but I crinkled it. I closed it together and opened it up and laid it fat, flat. That's why it has this texture on it. Before you crinkle this up into a ball, it's flat and smooth like this. This is the unwashed craft text. This is the washed. You see the difference? This is washed and crinkled. It gives us this beautiful texture. <laughs> yes. I like the textures that you can get with the craft text. Just by washing it, and crinkling it up and it doesn't hurt it i mean if i can take this craft text and do this and you think oh no she's ruining it no i'm actually making it better the more you do that it's almost like that patch on the back of denim jeans you see how now i've given it more texture more texture and more dimension it's really up to you how much texture you want. And you can wash it again and again. It's really a fun product. You can sew it. You can dye it. You can put it through a printer. And I'm going to show you what I did with this one. With this natural. I put this through my printer. Okay. So what I end up doing, I'm going to show you, I take a piece like this when I'm making a basket and I want to include it in the basket. Either I can cut it with a straight edge or I can cut it with a rotary cutter with some texture on it. This is a, a, a pinking blade. You see those curves? And you can see the curves right here in the craft text. There are the curves. That just adds a little extra to the look of the craft text in your basket. And I did that with this one. Here's another one that's a larger basket. Again, I use those strips. And this color is called No Special Way to Cut It um, Copper. Let me see if I can find this one. I don't think I put it in the carousel, but I think this is called Denim, this color of craft text. You just want a sharp blade. And you can see the difference. This one has some texture around it. I'll go to the overhead camera so you can see it a little bit better. Do it this way. 
Here we go. You see, by using the pinkering, the pinking uh, rotary cutter, I can get some texture, some curves to the craft text. And you can just have a regular 45 millimeter rotary cutter like this one. And then you just change the blade. I have two of the same type of rotary cutters. So I dedicate one for this blade and one for a straight blade. So I'll put some of this out. This is some craft text that's ready to be put in a basket. And you see, I just did quarter inch cuts. So Pamela says, my baskets are so stable. They get floppy. Any suggestions? Yes, I have a fabulous tip. It's one that I'll have to share at another session. I'm going to do more sessions on basket making. This is just the beginning. But yes, there is a solution for making the baskets a little bit more rigid so, that, so they're not floppy. And I will share that with you next time. Here is the craft text, and you can see how I use this blade. You can just add that blade to cut the craft text like that. Yes, stay tuned, Pamela. <laughs> More basket videos. So I have a whole bunch of craft text pre-cut and ready to make my own special rope for my baskets. Now remember, I said I take two pieces of rope. As an example, I would take two pieces like this, side by side, I put the craft text right on top. Right on top, and I would do a zigzag stitch. And I probably would use blue thread, blue thread to go back and forth. So I take this, put it on top, and as I'm feeding it through the machine, I would stitch this to, to two ropes before I make the basket. And that's what I did with this, with this one. That's why when you look at this, you see the red zigzag. That's how I attached this red craft text. Now that you see an example, I hope that makes more sense. Ah, what stitch length do I use? I use a 4.0. So my foot zigzag is the widest. Then I use a 4.0 stitch length for my zigzag. Now, again, I'm using that 100 needle. You can use all kinds of threads. You don't have to use blue thread. You can use any color thread you want. And so I have a series of beautiful threads from Connecting Threads, just highlighted in the carousel, of cotton threads that I like for my baskets. I tend to like a matte finish as opposed to a glossy. And these cotton threads have a nice finish and you can get such a good variety of colors. This is the essential cotton threads. And let's see if I can read this on the side here. I might have to put in my glasses to be able to read it. Okay, so this is 100% um, cotton and it's a long staple, a satin finish. And it's 50 weight thread, you get 1,200 yards. This is by Connecting Threads. I love this thread. Now, if you did not see our discussion on threads, you have to take a look. You can look at the uh, replays here on Amazon. They're just below uh, on my channel on Amazon and also on the replays on YouTube. I did a whole two hour session on threads and what long staple means. That's an important thing. <laughs> yes. 
Yes, I think it's a little bit of both copper. The, the words are very tiny. And let's see, that's even better. I changed my overhead camera. This one is doing so much better with being able to focus in on the information. I hope that helps everybody. You can see that information there. All right. So that's some of the threads I use. Okay. So you see one example of how I use the craft text, but there's so many different ways you can use it. I want to show you another way you can use the craft text to embellish your baskets. Remember, I mentioned that I use it in my home printer. See that label right there? That's craft text. That's craft text. I'm going to highlight um, the sample pack again. And I like the sample pack because it's eight and a half by 11. You can put it in your home printer. So Lois says, do you sew two ropes together and then add the craft text or is it done in one step? It just depends. Sometimes if I'm in a hurry, I try and add it at the same time, but it doesn't always work out. And so I have to slow myself down and I will stitch with a blending thread on the rope so you don't see it, the two ropes together. Then add the um, craft text with the color thread, the blue or the red, when I add the craft text. Good question. Good question. It's a personal preference. You have to test and see. Are you able to manage three different things moving underneath the needle evenly? If you find you can't do all three together evenly, it's hard enough to do one when you're doing a rope basket. Then you add two and you need to make sure that they're feeding together at the same time and they are going to catch, the zigzag's going to catch each one. Tight rope in the middle. Ah, yes. I will stitch, let's see, go back to overhead camera. This craft cord that's in the middle, I sewed these two outer pieces together first. Then I stitched this one in the middle after with a tighter zigzag. And I did it on both sides. So this, before it's even a basket, I had to sew the two ropes together. Then I sewed the embellishment, that's number two. Then number three, I had to sew it on the other side. So this was sewn three times already, even before it's become a basket. So extra steps. Now I'm giving away all my secrets. I hope you ladies know that. Secrets to the designs of my basket. <laughs> my basket making. <laughs> it's up to you if you want to do that many steps, but I want to show you the label. Look at, let me see if I can get this right here. All right, there we go. Let me move my thread over. So I'm using my, my home printer and I use an Epson printer on highlighted in the carousel. There are multiple Epson printers in the workforce line. Pamela says, I'm taking notes. Good. So if any of you make baskets, I want to see them. There's multiple. I have the wide uh, format uh, Epson printer, the 7710. But they also make a smaller home use printer with some of the same features. They're wireless. I can connect and print via the Wi-Fi in my home and it goes straight from my phone to the printer. I can print anything from my phone, from my computers, from my laptop, and from my tablets. So I like that wireless connectivity to my printer. And Epson makes several. So here is what I was able to do in my printer. This is all craft text. 
you see I took a smaller piece and I wrapped it around the edge after I finished the basket. And then I also took craft text in stone. Now, if you want to do this in your printer, you want to get the sample pack that's eight and a half by 11. Eight and a half by 11. I'm going to go back to that on the carousel so those who are watching on Amazon know what I'm talking about. Let's see if I can find it. It is, where is it? Okay, here we go. This is the stone. And I'm able to print with my inkjet printer. And do you also see how I use the pinking cutter to give me that wavy edge? Now, of course, it could be a straight edge. But I wanted to match the design of the basket. Okay? I love the, the ability to print on craft text. Let me show you um, <clears throat> some more examples of that. So here's the stone, right? Do I heat set the ink? I It's not necessary, but I do anyway. I tested it out and I said, well, let me try because that's what we do on fabric. We heat set it. So here it is an example. This is um, for another project, but this went through my printer. This is Craftex. It went through my printer. Now, you have to change it for the setting for heavier stock because it does have some weight to it. It's not thin like regular office paper, so make sure you put it on heavy stock. And as always, test, test, test. Test everything, right? I love using craft text for embellishments. Love it, love it, love it. Let me show you another example. Where is it? Okay, here's another example of craft text. And it's going to segue. Well, before I do this one, uh, yeah, I'll do this one now. Okay. Go back to my overhead camera. Okay, so I have taken the craft text, and again, I use my pink ink rotary cutter because I don't waste anything. I use smaller pieces of craft text, and I make it into smaller pieces that I can stitch into the basket while I'm sewing it underneath the needle. It's random. It's, uh, it's not uniform. But these smaller pieces, I don't waste any craft text. And I'm going to show you my craft text bin of scraps. I have a bin of scraps. Now I'm going to dump these. And then show you how it's stitched in the basket. Can you see those smaller pieces? They are stitched right into the basket as I'm stitching, just random. So Copper says, Lois has a question about her stitch length. Do you, what is the stitch length? It's an inkjet printer. I'm using an inkjet printer when I stitch, when I print on the craft text. Sorry, I missed your question, Lois. So it's inkjet printer. And yes, I do heat set it with a hot iron, no steam. And I am i don't own or use a laser printer. I don't know if it will work on that. So your machine does nine millimeters. So my machine is a seven millimeter, just like anything else. Test. You're going to get a, two pieces of rope. You're going to test that 100 needle and you're going to go back and forth on the rope. And you're going to test your zigzag width. So for a 9 millimeter, that's a little bit bigger, right, than a 7 millimeter machine. So you may not need that larger setting on your 9 millimeter. I would test your zigzag. The main thing is that you want to catch both sides of the rope. 
and let me tell you why. If you sew and you have a narrow zigzag, you are going to miss one side of the rope or the other. You will not catch both sides. You're going to have a gap, which means you're going to have to go back and stitch over that and fix that gap, which is another tip. As you're making your baskets, before you start to turn it, to give it a curve, you want to check the base. Check the base to make sure there are no gaps. Make sure you don't have any gaps because this is when, if you find a gap, you want to close that gap with an additional zigzag. You're going to have to break thread, put it back underneath the needle, and fix that gap here or here, wherever it is before you start to go up high. It's harder to fix a gap. Yes, mind the gap. Now, if after I stitch the basket at this, like this, and there's a gap right in here, it's gonna be hard to stitch. So before you start to build the wall of the basket, you want to look for gaps. That's why I suggest that wider zigzag to help you make sure you don't miss the rope but test. Okay, so let's go back to this here. Overhead camera. All right, so with this one, again, I did double rope because I wanted a certain look and I have an oval shape, but I also used variegated thread. This is when I love variegated thread. Can you ladies see how that just adds a whole new look by using variegated thread? And I use different ones. I like So Fine, Fantastico, and there's one that's called the Poly Quilter. The Poly Quilter is not made anymore, but it is a 30 weight thread. It's heavier. I'm going to highlight the superior threads. This is the Poly Quilter. It's a 30 weight thread, a variegated thread. And I like the matte finish. I love the thickness of it. It really fills that 100 needle hole. Craft Text, once you stitch a hole in it, it's permanent. And it's a hole. It's not going to wrap around the thread. So you want really a heavier weight thread when you're stitching into craft text. On my next project, you're going to see the holes that are in the craft text. I think it adds a little something to it. But just to be, be mindful of that, since you're using a hundred needle, you want to make sure that if you're stitching into craft text, try and get a heavier weight thread. And the variegated thread, I just love the look that it makes against the cotton rope. What do you ladies think? So it can be blue, it can be beige, it can be red variegated. It's just so pretty. I love it. And these are the different ones that I have used. And then King Tut. King Tut is another one. This is 40 weight. This is so fine. These are 50 weight. So in terms of thickness, we have our 30, our 40, and then our 50 weight threads. And these are all variegated cotton threads. I'll highlight that in the carousel on Amazon for those who are watching. All right. Uh, oh, Marsha, you're welcome. Thanks for staying up late and teaching the teaching is always worth it. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad that you're enjoying it. So this is the thinner thread, the, the 50 weight, the King Tut. I highlight that in the carousel. Yeah, the darker does really pop. And that's where we get to have some fun, right, ladies? We get to have some fun with thread. I love playing with thread and seeing what happens. 
and it just adds this whole new dimension. All right, where is the King Tut? I'm looking for it on my phone. This is how I highlight the products on Amazon. Did I add it? I thought I did. Hmm. I have the superior thread so fine. Okay, I think that's it there. I just highlight. This is the so fine. This is the poly. So 30 weight, 40 and 50. All variegated. Now, of course, this 30 weight, the heavier weight, is going to fill that hole really well. This will do okay. This you might see a little bit of a gap with a 100 needle. Okay? So that's that. And here is my Craft Text scrap bin. Nothing goes to waste. I will use all of this to embellish future baskets. All of these can be used. Even these smaller strips can be used. Okay, let me show you now how I did the tray. Go back to the host view. So we have a basket with the rope. Highlighted again in the carousel, and we have a tray. Both made with cotton rope. And remember the size. The size is this 7 32 diameter. This is it. 732. All right. Not too thick, not too thin. When it's too thin, it's hard to, to, to sew under the needle. At least it is for me. So how do I get this kind of design in the rope? How does she do that? That peppermint candy kind of look. Again, this is craft text. Go to the overhead camera, and I'm going to show you. This is the Masala, but of course, you can use any color you want. Hey, Jacqueline, I'm so glad you're here. So glad you made it. So, this is the craft text, and then here is another way that I use some of those scraps. I put it in the center. Okay, just stitch it down. All right, let's take a look. Here is the tray with some, you can get an idea of the size of the tray. It has some jewelry on it, a piece of gla uh, glasses and a little dish on it. That's the size of the tray. Just enough to put on your dresser. Of course, you can make this any size. This is oval more than it is round. It's used with the same cotton rope and I'm going to use, you see the zigzag in the red thread. This was not doubled. This is a single rope, a single rope to make the basket. I don't know if you can tell, I'll go back to the overhead camera, you can see the zigzags are closer on this one. Zigzags are closer on a single rope you, compared to this one. See how the zigzags are further away? And here they're closer. Also notice I did a little extra fun back and forth zigzags just for additional accent. It didn't have to be perfect. The imperfectness of it is what makes it. That little extra embellishment, just adding extra thread, going back and forth on the zigzag. How long does it take to make? It varies. You know, if it's a basket that I have multiple steps on that I share it with you, or one that um, is a single, or if I'm not doing these embellishments, it doesn't take that long. Um, I think it takes longer for me to make the baskets with fabric than it does with the craft text or just using um, different threading techniques. Let's see. Now let's look at... Uh, here's the tray. 
Here's the tray, me stitching the tray. I'm nearing the time when I'm about to turn it over. And again, I'm using my home machine. I'm using a Janome memory craft machine. Let me find that. And my machine comes with all the necessary feet. You see how I'm wrapping it around and then I start stitching and I glide it with my hand, wrap, I wrap it, and then I stitch. Wrap and I hold the craft text in place taut as I'm stitching on the end of the, um, at the end, I guess. So I'm wrapping and I'm holding it and I'm doing it a strip at a time. Let's see. So one strip, I'm wrapping it around it as I go around. And I'll hold the other end a little taut. Okay. All right. You can see now that now I, I'm stitching without adding the craft text. And I'm using one hand to guide the um, rope as it's being guided into the machine. And remember that tip, have it feed on the right hand side so that it builds, the basket builds on the left. Now I'm raising it to start to build the wall of the, of the tray. This small wall is now being built by lifting up. Basically, I'm taking it, lifting it up like this so that it can start to build. Yes, I did speed this up a little bit so that it wouldn't be five minutes long. You're right, Copper, I don't stitch that fast. <laughs> Good observation. Good observation. And it takes time to develop this skill. Remember, I've been doing this for a number of years and I have practiced over and over and I have developed different techniques that are repeatable that lead to success. See how I'm using my thumb to hold it in place and I'm wrapping it and then putting my thumb there to hold that wrapped uh, rope against what is already stitched? Yes. <laughs> You're a turtle. You're so slow. <laughs> I always say it's better to go slow and a controlled pace so you don't have to unpick or redo it. Who wants to unsew something or have to go back and fix because you've missed it? And now I'm stitching back and forth and guiding it through. Little by little, nice and easy. Yay, Marsha, I'm so glad you're enjoying this. Again, for those on Amazon, I'm using a 100 needle to do this stitching. 100 needle. And this is the tray that you see that is being stitched. All right, um, and I'm using craft hex. I'm wrapping that Marsala craft hex to create the beautiful peppermint-like design on the rope basket. And you can do this. You can make this basket. It is possible. You can make it. So I just showed you how I created the wall, this little shelf on the tray, how the craft hex was added, now let's look at this patch. How do you add this patch? And when do you add it? Since it's not a tall wall like this one, this is not tall. If I wanted to add a patch in the center of this, I would add it before I got too high. It would be difficult to do it after. Hello, Leslie on Amazon. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you like it. And thanks for following. Thank you for following Quilt Conversations Live on Amazon. 
we love to talk about sewing and quilting. So now I want to show you how you add the craft text in the middle. And let me show you up close. Again, I use my pinking blade to give some curve. Now, of course, it can be straight. I've also used my AccuQuilt Go Cutter. Someone noticed that to do hearts. This is going to be a future basket. Let me put it on this side. I will put this inside a basket. It's just waiting for me to get my act together, but this is craft tech. And I put some decorative stitching on it, and I will put that in the middle of a basket. It's ready to go. But now we want to look at, oh, I'm glad you like it. We're going to look at how to add this center. Let me go to that in the video. Here we go. So basically, you're going to cut the shape based on the basket shape, round, oval, something in between, because every single basket is going to be unique. And you will maybe do it a paper template first to make sure it's the right shape. And when you're stitching craft text, you need to have a longer stitch length, like 3.0 or higher. Anything smaller. Oh, Marsha, you're so sweet. I'm so thankful. We are a fun bunch. Yes, thank you. It is a great group. Thank you. I'm so glad you enjoy our Friday night live sessions. We want to make sure that we don't have a short stitch length. If it's too short, you're basically perforating the craft text and then it's going to come apart. And if you're going to add this in the center, whether it's a basket or a tray, you want to do it early. Before, if the tray has a higher wall, it's harder to put underneath the machine. That's my tips for adding this little extra embellishment on the inside. I think it just makes a difference. What do you ladies think? Do you, li do you like the addition of this? What do you think? I think it adds something to it. I like it. So um, that was the Masala Craft Text, but it comes in so many beautiful colors. So just, this is like a peppermint one but imagine also know that you can get craft text in rolls and i have a roll and i have it in the natural unwashed this will be cut down into guess what eight and a half by 11 sheets I will cut this down to smaller sheets so that I can put it in my printer because I use it for labels, I use it for embellishments, I use it for all kinds of things. Labels for my baskets. You can see one right here. Here's the label that went through my printer right there on the basket and it's on there and right there and of course I have it in other colors now guess what <laughs> a couple of years ago I was a craft text ambassador for a company so I got these from the company and this is what I have left over from working with it two years ago. It's been a couple of years since um, I had that relationship with them. but So I have some left over. So this is what's left over. I have all these different colors. This is a nice bright, bold red. This is the denim. And a roll of greenery. So many colors. And then I have a roll of white ready to go. And this is, again, unwashed. And this will go through my printer, this white one. 
I love craft text. So many beautiful colors. I'll highlight some of them in the carousel. Okay. And I'm going to show you some more projects. This is that bright orange that I made with the heart. <clears throat> okay. Let's see. Do I have this other one? Nope, I don't. It's all gone. Okay. I think I have too much craft text. Can you have too much craft text? <laughs> I'm going to say no. <laughs> uh, check in the chat. How's everyone doing? All right. So Pamela says, my mind went to a heart-shaped basket. That's a neat idea. I wonder if it's possible. I think you can do it. You're just going to have to think about, well, what are the sections? Can you break the heart into sections to do it? Would you um, stitch a certain part and then continue? Would you do some of it by hand to get it started? I think that's a great idea. If you try it, let us know. Let us know. I want to show you another set. Here's another set that I've made. And this is with um, Craft Text again. This is Craft Text. And this is from the, it's this one right here. This Craft Text. And I'll highlight, it's highlight, it's called Orchid. This color is Orchid. But look at how it just changes the way this rope basket looks by doing two bands. And then this one, it creates that nice swirl on in the, in the center. Don't you like that swirl? I do. Right there in the center. And then just one center of orchid going around the middle on this smaller basket. And then this has it on the inside swirl there. Do you like the double swirl, this double? Or do you like the single? Again, that's with the craft text and the cotton rope. Thank you for those who are watching on Amazon. Unmute, say hello, and don't forget to hit that follow button right there. You can see it. Hit the follow button. I like this one. <laughs> Sombrero <laughs> with the wide basket. <laughs> Copper, you're so funny. <laughs> Jacqueline likes both, both designs, but that's the beauty of it. You can have fun making these baskets and making embellishments. And ladies, this is just the start. I can't wait to share another round of basket making with you. Let me show you. I think I have one other. I showed you that. Okay, this is more about the craft text, the different colors that you can get. And I like these colors. Oops, what am I doing way over there? Let me bring myself over. <laughs> I love the craft text. And there goes how I stitch the craft text, you know, the, the hearts with some decorative stitching on my machine. Again, that's that Janome machine. I've had it for years. I love it. And then here are the labels that I made through my printer. Thank you for following. Thank you for following MB. So glad anyone else out there on Amazon hit that follow button. We are live every single Wednesday and now on Friday. I don't know if I made this announcement yet. I don't think I have. I am part of this new thing called DYI Hero. On March 8th, you can vote for me for the DY, DIY Hero. March 8th, voting opens. And part of that 
involves, I have decided that every single week for this competition, Wednesday and Friday, all of my DIY projects that I share for that competition, I'm going to go live and I'm going to show you how I did it so you can do it. So on Wednesday, I did a live session on the love quilt. The love quilt is a mini quilt and I show you how I designed it in software, electric quilt. I did a demo on the software. You can watch the replay right here on Amazon. It's just below on my uh, Amazon live page. You can watch it on YouTube. I show you from the beginning to end how I did the love quilt. Today, it's all about baskets. And these are the DIY projects that I'm featuring for this competition. So you get to not only see the projects, you get to see how I did it so you can do it. You can make these DIY projects too. So I'm excited about that. Voting opens March 8th. And if you're on YouTube, you just go to the description box below and you can click on the link to vote for me to be the DIY hero. I'm a hero, DIY hero, <laughs> without a cape. No cape here. I don't fly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Elaine was there on Wednesday when I when I did the love quilt. It's called Love Letters. Love Letters. And I showed you how I designed it in the software. If And you can do it on Mac or PC. It's really up to you. Oh, Jacqueline, your birthday is March 5th. Happy birthday. Yay. Happy birthday. Will we, will we be together? What is next week, Friday? Is it the 5th? <laughs> Jacqueline says she can't start making baskets before she starts to make quilts. I don't know. You could do both. You could do both. Now, I just want to check on Amazon. Have I covered everything in the carousel? All the threads, the needles, the printer, the craft text that I use for these fabulous baskets. This one, I just was ecstatic when I made this one. I couldn't wait to make another one. This is actually one of my favorites because it just has this nice random strips going around it. Not planned. I just had fun making it. It didn't, it, it's unevenness is what makes it perfect to me. So I love this one. I haven't had had time to make baskets lately but I will again when I make some time I will I'll make some time I wanted to share with you that sometimes what I do is that I experiment remember ladies it's all about testing oh thank you for that Noah I'm glad you enjoy how I'm using tech to share what I love and that's sewing and quilting and some crafting. Tonight we are talking, this is Noah on Amazon. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoy how I present my content and I want to share with you ladies one of the things that I do when I test and I always encourage you to test, right? If you're new to basket making, you want to get your supply list and sometimes it's Steps in just getting the supplies, getting them ready. You get the rope. I'm going to highlight it in the carousel on Amazon. You get the, the rope. Okay, you get the clothesline rope. Then you get your thread and you do a basic basket. Just learn the technique. Then you practice embellishments. Some of the things that I talked about tonight by making your own rope, by taking two and putting two together. Just put two together. Don't add any craft text. Don't add any extra cords. Just practice that technique. Then make a basket turning two pieces. Let me go to the overhead cam. Putting two pieces together, which I want to show you something here. It's harder 
it's a little bit more difficult to take two pieces and wrap it into a circle. It's hard. You see how it doesn't want to do that? It bunches. So rather than fight it, I said, well, then that means I'm making oval baskets. I will pull and stretch and pull. You see, I'm pulling on this because it's flexible. You see how the more I pull it, the more it, it wants to get into shape in the direction I'm pulling. See how that happened? I'm pulling and pulling. And it's coming into shape. Now, if I wanted to make a longer uh, oval shape, a longer oval shape, I'm going to do this, right? I want to start like this. These two are, are not coming together. I have this little bump. How do I get that flat? This is another tip for you ladies. How do you make that flat? You just take it and you pull it. Just like I did before. I'm putting it together and I'm pulling it until it behaves. Until it goes the way I want it to go. I'm pulling on both ends. I'm pulling here and I'm pulling with this hand. Until this goes flat. See how that went flat? Then I would get my zigzag stitch, right? And I would zigzag here back and forth to make that go nice and flat. Flat as much as I can. Pull, pull, pull. And remember, we're going to zigzag all the way down. And then when you get here on this edge, you're going to trim off as much as this furriness as you can. And then you're going to wrap this right over it so that the furry part of this is on the back of the basket, not on the top on the inside. Okay. You're going to wrap it around. And once I wrap it, just like that, I'm doing a number of zigzags to make sure that that is a tight stitch around that portion of the basket. Okay. Don't, <laughs> don't steal. There was wash lines. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure what you ladies are talking about there. I missed something here. Oh, I see. Elaine says her neighbors will be missing their, <laughs> their washing lines. Yes, this is clothesline that we're using to make baskets. <laughs> and then you keep going around and around. All right, so that was a tip. When you're doing doubles, it is a little bit more challenging. So start with a single rope first. Single rope first. If you've never done it before, you're going to take the single rope. You're going to stitch off the edge, straight stitch back and forth, snip off the extra, and then you're going to start small. Just like that. And keep going with your zigzag stitch. In the beginning, it goes a little bit slow, but it speeds up as you get bigger and bigger. You see how easier that was to create a spiral when it's just one rope? Okay. So this is a test. I'm testing this out. Different ways to add embellishments. This is also craft text. All right. Okay, Elaine, let's see. I think there's more than fair trade. You can start with my wash line first. <laughs> thick clothesline goes faster than the thin one. Yes, it does, but don't make it too thick that it can't go underneath your machine foot. Now, remember, you want to be careful with your sewing machine. So I started out with blending thread and then I stopped. I broke thread because I didn't want this to be on top of 
this variegated thread. So I wanted this to be a clear, just no extra colors around the star. So start it with one rope going around. And remember, whenever we're adding embellishment in the middle with the craft text, and I'll highlight that in the carousel, the craft text for those watching on Amazon. If you've never tried craft text, get the sampler pack. This is a star. Yes, you have two of my baskets. Sherry has two of my baskets. I'm so glad you like them, Sherry. Thank you. Yes, I forgot to mention, I am an Amazon handmade seller. I have my baskets here on Amazon. You can purchase a basket from me. That's right. Maybe I'll share that link the next time we do baskets. I'm going to do it again. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about some more things about basket making. Uh, so here's the star. No, no variegated thread here. Just blending thread. Broke thread. Tied it off. Buried it. Then I introduced the variegated thread. You see the difference? Not only did I start adding this variegated thread, then I added an extra craft cord. Can you see that extra craft cord that I added? I love adding different embellishments. You can see the difference in the look that you get from blending thread to variegated thread with color and then adding an additional cord on top. Oh, yes, you're welcome, Marsha. <laughs> yes. All right. They're in your travel trailer. I'm so glad you like them, Sherry. So I hope you ladies got a lot of good, fun tips on how to make baskets. And if you're taking notes, you will... um then have a reference to make your own baskets, but fu have fun, test. Give yourself permission to test. This is a test. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this. I might continue it and finish it off as a basket, or I might make it a tray. I haven't decided, so that's why it's still unfinished. So I always have something in the middle of the process. I think that's it for tonight. Thank you, ladies, for being here. It's good to be back. I enjoyed our time together. I hope you're going to make a basket or considering buying one of mine <laughs> like Sherry has. You can make placemats and trivets. This could be a placemat or a trivet. Very good idea. You can stitch some felt on the back of this if you want to make it into a trivet for the table. I have done that. I've made some uh, coasters where I've added felt on the back so that it's on the table. You are welcome. You are welcome. Yes, and you did, ladies, did a lot of laughing and giggling over there in the chat on YouTube. I think I was missing out on something, some of it while I was explaining the baskets. What else? Anything else? Is, I think that's it. I covered all the basics. The type of rope I use, you can use any that you prefer. I am going to share. Hello, Gail. Thank you for following. Hey, if you're watching on Amazon, don't hesitate to hit that follow button and join us every single Wednesday and Friday for the next few weeks. I am sharing DIY projects, very specific projects that I'm sharing for a competition. And I want to not only share what I've done, I want to help you make it if you are so inclined. And tonight, it was about baskets. Two nights ago on Wednesday, we talked about a art quilt, a mini art quilt. And you can watch on my Amazon channel or YouTube channel. You can watch the replay. And if you're on YouTube, all the links to everything I shared, if you want to do it, you want to make your own basket. The links are in the description. 
so that you can assemble your supplies and you can make your own basket or tray. Yes, thank you, Copper, for reminding ladies to hit the like button. Give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed tonight. I'm going to go live again next week with another DIY project, one that you can make. I haven't decided which one it is. I don't know if I should continue with baskets or go back to quilts. Would you ladies like me to continue with the basket making? The next section that I have to talk about some tips for rope basket making. Let me know in the chat on Amazon as well as on YouTube. What would you like to see me talk about? Tonight it was about how to use craft text and cotton rope. Craft text, number of ways to use it in your basket making. I gave you tips on basic basket making, how to feed it into your sewing machine, the needle size, the type of thread I like to use. What would you ladies like? So is it another quilt project or baskets? Wilda says, let's do baskets again. Let's do baskets. Now, fabric, wrap baskets. Okay, I don't have many of those, but I can share some of those that I've done. I will pull out what I have made and talk about the different types of fabrics I like to use. All right, let me look through and see what I have. I'll do baskets again uh, next Friday. Wednesday, I'll do another quilt. So next Wednesday will be a quilt here on Amazon Live and YouTube, Facebook as well. Another DIY project. And then Friday will be baskets again. Sherry says baskets would be okay. All right. And fabric. Okay, awesome. We have a plan. We have a plan. All right, ladies. Well, have a fantastic and safe weekend. Thank you for joining me. This has been another wonderful quilt conversation about baskets. <laughs> I hope it was okay to do a departure. We are crafters and sewers, and sometimes in the middle of making quilts, we will make other things, including baskets, right? We will make baskets out of cotton rope, or we will make trays. We will make rope trays. I hope you enjoy tonight. I will see you next time for another Quilt Conversations Live. Thank you, ladies. I will see you next time. Be well. Have a great one, too, Sherry. Appreciate you. And Marsha, thank you for being here. And thank you to um, MB on Amazon and to Gail and to Noah. Thank you for the kudos on the technology use. And thank you, Leslie, too, for following. Thank you, everyone. I'll see you next time. Have a fantastic weekend. You are welcome, Copper. Thank you for helping out on YouTube. Elaine, go get some rest. <laughs> All right, here we go. See you next time for another Quilt Conversations Live. I'm Geraldine Wilkins, the Living Water Quilter. <laughs>